Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to again find the slope, concavity, the max, the mins, and inflection points of a function. In this case, we're going to use a trigonometric function, f of x equals the cosine of x, and we're going to limit ourselves to the region for x between 0 and 2 pi, which is a complete circle, 360 degrees. Uh, we could go beyond a little bit, but at least let's limit ourselves to about that region. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we have a very specific technique that we follow. The first thing we always do is find the derivative. So step one, find f prime of x. And since the derivative of the sine is the cosine, the derivative of the cosine is therefore the negative sine. So this is the negative sine of x. And then the next thing we're going to do is, because we want to find the max and the min and the horizontal inflection points, we want to set f prime of x equal to zero. So because when the slope is zero, that's where we have either max, min, or an inflection point. So zero equals negative sine of x. Of course, then the negative disappears. We have the sine of x equal to zero. And now we ask ourselves the question, where is the sine of x equal to zero? Well, that happens at 90 degrees, which is pi over 2. Oh, no, 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 not that. That's the cosine. I'm looking for the sine. That's at uh, x equals 0, and then x equals pi or 180 degrees. So therefore, we can conclude that x equals 0 or x equals 180 degrees, which is pi. So those are the two values of x where the slope is 0. Now, to find the corresponding y values of that, we then plug those values back in the original function. So we have f of x equals 0 is equal to the cosine of 0, which is 1. That means when the slope is 0, the y value is 1. And that happens when x is equal to 0. So we can actually put that on the graph. There we go. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. So right there, so that's 0. We call that 1. And then for the second value, f of x equals pi. That's equal to the cosine of pi which is, uh, let's see here, that's on the other side of the circle, that's a negative 1. And so that means when x equals pi, y equals negative 1. So let's say that this here is pi, and this here is 2 pi. When x equals pi, y is negative 1. So here we go. We have a place right there. This is where x equals 0, y equals 1, where the slope is 0. And here we have when x equals pi and y is equal to negative 1, the slope is 0 as well. So we found two places where the slope is 0. That doesn't mean yet that those are max or min, those could also be horizontal inflection points. Now, of course, we can already think, since we're dealing with the cosine of x, those are not going to be inflection points. That's going to be the high and the low values of our function. But let's say we don't know that yet. So what's the next step? The next step is to find the second derivative of the function. So for we find f double prime of x. And why do we do that? Because there we can find, by getting the second derivative of x, we can find the inflection points, and we can also figure out the concavity of our function. So f, prime of, f double prime of x is equal to, let's go to f prime of x, the sine of x. The derivative of the sine is the cosine. We still have the negative here, so that's minus the cosine of x. And so now we're going to set the second derivative equal to 0. So for 5, we set f double prime of x equal to 0, which means that minus the cosine of x equals 0, which means the cosine of x equals 0. And when is the cosine of x equal to 0? Well, it's equal to 0 at pi over 2 at 90 degrees, and it's 0 at 270 degrees. So the conclusion is and that x equal pi over 2, and x equals 3 pi over 2. So what's happening at those locations? Well, those two locations, we know we're going to have inflection points. And since those are not the same points that we found when we're looking for the slope equal to 0, see, we have x equals 0 or x equals pi, which is not the same as pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2, we then know that these are either max or mins. And these are inflection points. And what type of inflection points? They're not the horizontal type of inflection points, because if they were, we would have found them over here. Since we didn't find them over here, we only found them there. That means they're vertical inflection points. Now, of course, when we say vertical, we don't mean exactly vertical, but it means non-horizontal. That's just the way I call them. So vertical inflection points. All right. Now, to find out where those points are, we're going to plug those values back in the original equation to find the corresponding y values. So f of x equal, let's plug in pi over 2, 
is equal to, there's my original function, so we have the cosine of pi over 2, which is equal to 0. Ha! Ah, that means when x equals pi over 2, y is equal to 0. So pi over 2 is right over here. And that means y is 0. That means here we have a vertical inflection point. Of course, not exactly vertical, but gives the correct idea. And then we do again the same for x equals 3 pi over 2. So when f of x equals 3 pi over 2, we get the cosine of 3 pi over 2, which is 270 degrees, which gives us um, 0 as well. So when x is 3 pi over 2, which is over here, 3 pi over 2, uh, the y value is back to 0. So now we have four critical points. This looks like it's a max. That's a min. That's a vertical inflection point. That's a vertical inflection point. So we can see that the curve looks like it's going to go like this. Now, what do we find at 2 pi? Well, it turns out if we go back to the first derivative, and we know that the first derivative is equal to minus sine of x, if we set this first derivative equal to 0, we get sine of x equals 0, which also means that at 2 pi, because that's still part of our limits, we also find a critical point. So x equals 2 pi is a valid place as well. At x equals 2 pi, the sine of 2 pi is 0. Again, the slope is 0, which means over here we'll find this 0 slope again. There we go. Like that. Okay, now we're not quite done yet. We want to know the concavity. So to find the concavity, we go back to second derivative, right here. And we found some inflection points. So we want to know to the left and to the right of those inflection points, what is the concavity like? So let's try that. So now we're at, um, this, this would be 6, now we're at 7. To find concavity. We're going to find points to the left and the right of, let's say, pi over 2. So let's take x equals 0. So x equals 0, and plug that back into this double derivative. All right, our second derivative here, have double prime of x equals 0 is equal to minus the cosine of 0. Now the cosine of 0 is 1, and with the negative in front of it is negative 1, which means that it's negative. That means that when x is equal to 0, my concavity is negative or it is concave down. So let's go over here. Here, x is equal to 0. You can clearly see that we have concavity down, and so that matches what we have here. Let's find another point. How about the point in between those two? How about at x equals pi? f prime of x, or f double prime of x. So we're going to evaluate the second derivative for x equals pi. So we have f double prime when x equals pi, that's equal to minus the cosine of pi. Now the cosine of pi is negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So that's positive, which means it's concave up. Here we knew that it was concave down. So when x equals to pi, which is over here, we know that the slope, that the curve is concave up, so like this concave up, which matches what we see. And then, of course, if we go to the right of 3 pi over 2, so we go f double prime for, let's say, x equals 2 pi, which is to the right of 3 pi over 2, we get minus the cosine of 2 pi. Now, the cosine of 2 pi is a positive 1, with a negative in front of it that gives us negative 1, which is negative. And again, we know at that location, the concavity is concave down. And again, if we go to the value 2 pi, we look at the slope here, we can see, yes, indeed, there the slope is concave down. Now, we can do one more thing. We can find the slope at various locations. Let's just find the slope at one location. So for step 8, we're going to evaluate the slope, like in between the max and the min, like maybe at pi over 2. So evaluate f prime of x equals pi over 2, which is equal to, let's go back over here, f prime of x is minus the sine of x. Um, oh, and uh, we have to, of course, minus sine of x, and x is pi over 2. Now, the sine of pi over 2, that's 1, with a negative in front of it, that's equal to negative 1, which means the slope is negative. negative. 
So in the region where x equals pi over 2, which is right here, sure enough, the slope looks like it's negative, and that validates that as well. So here you can see, no matter what the function is, you can follow these very same steps for every function. First, you find the first derivative, set the first derivative equal to 0 to find the max and the min and the horizontal inflection points if they're there. We then take the second derivative. Well, before we do that, we can find the y values of those points so we can actually plot them on the graph. Then we find the second derivative of the function. We set the second derivative equal to 0 to find the inflection point. And if the points that you find are different from the points that you found here when you set the first derivative equal to 0, then you don't have uh, horizontal inflection points and you have vertical inflection points. And that also guarantees that these two are not horizontal inflection points, they're max and mins. Then you find the corresponding y values, so you can plot those points on the graph. Then you check for concavity by evaluating particular values for x in the second derivative to see if the concavity is concave up or concave down. And then finally, you evaluate the slope, which means the first derivative for, ver for various values of x to see what the slope is, if it's positive or negative. And that's how you evaluate all the various critical points on the graph and the concavity as well as the slope of your graph at all points on the graph. So hopefully that's helped you with the evaluation of that. I know that in most textbooks they like to take this one thing at a time and they show various sections where they talk about each one separately. I always found it to be very helpful to see it all at once every time you do a problem. That way you can pick and choose what you want to use and you can see there's a lot of overlap. You don't need to do all of it necessarily in every problem, but definitely by seeing how it's done the same way every single time, I think it makes it a little bit easier to understand what we're actually doing here. So good luck with that and it may require a couple of looks at this video to kind of get the, the, the knack of how to do all that. All right, good luck.